I must commend you because your utterances so far have not shown any division. <laughs> I, must, I must commend you uh, on that. And uh, just keep doing what is right because you have to be a pre if you win, you'll be a president for the whole nation. You'll not be a president for any group of people. It's my younger brother, and uh, he's been quite uh, uh, he's a friend. Younger friend, he showed that clearly. But he's a good man. That is, I can say that he's a good man. Thank you. So, guys, President Jonathan has praised Mr. Peter Obi for choosing his words wisely, you know, during his campaign and for sticking to issue-based campaign. And also, President Jonathan went ahead to tell Mr. Peter Obi that he is a good man. Honestly, everybody knows that Mr. Peter Obi is an exceptional leader. Mr. Peter Obi is an exceptional politician. Very different from a typical Nigerian politician. So guys, I don't know, what are you still waiting for if you've not made up your mind to vote for Mr. Peter Obi? Everybody is speaking positively about Mr. Peter Obi. I, I tell you, even President Jonathan went ahead to tell the world that if Mr. Peter Obi wins, he's going to be a president for everybody. There won't be any tribalism because this is somebody he knows very well. And Mr. Peter Obi has promised Nigerians that he has planned for every state of the federation. Whether you are from the north, you are from the south, you are going to feel the impact of his leadership. So guys, what are you waiting for? Northern Nigeria, Southern Nigeria, let us all come together and vote for Mr. Peter Obi. Mr. Peter Obi is competent. He is younger than the other presidential candidates. He is credible. He is somebody you can rely on. He's somebody you can trust. He even tells us to record his promises because he's going to ensure he fulfills all of them. What are you waiting for? So guys, let me allow you watch this video. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Give this video a like so that YouTube can recommend it to many people and turn on your notification bell for more uploads. Let me know what you think about this video in the comment section below. Thank you. No problem, let me sit down there. We'll find someone that's right there. Oh, don't come. No, let's talk. No, you sit there first. Why you they follow us this time like this? His Excellency, my younger brother, Peter Obi, and the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, the national chairman of the Labour Party, the Director General of the Campaign Organization and other senior members of the team. Let me not bother my senator. There are two, senator, uh, two female senators. You are too oppressive. <laughs> All right, so first, let me formally welcome you. Daddy, you would have paid the fine if I did not see you. You are welcome. Thank you, I finished my protocol before <laughs> you came in. Thank you. So first, let me welcome you and your team. I will be very fast because of the time you have to fly to Asaba. Um, and to thank you for finding time to come and pay the courtesy call on me. Because I know the presidential as candidates that will come to Yenagoa any time that I'm here will want to come and pay the, this respect. So I have to thank you that you are the first, because I came here two days ago. <laughs> then yesterday, I went to Abakalike, came down, I came back this morning. And uh, after I use this unique opportunity to encourage you in what you are doing, and Nigeria, for us to move forward, we need unity. So many countries, when you talk about in the late 50s, early 60s, there was prediction that Nigeria and XYZ countries will be at par. I don't want to go into mentioning those names. And you normally ask yourself, why are we still where we are? This was predicted by 
intellectuals, not ordinary people. People who study the world and look at the world trends and predicted that Nigeria, Brazil, India, blah, 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 will be this disease. All those countries have left us. But we are still where we are. And we Nigerians must ask ourselves one question. Why have we not been able to move with others? There is, in terms of tri tribal sentiment, racist sentiments, and so on, it's al almost every nation. But the degree we have in Nigeria is very debilitating. It's what is pushing us backward. We have a country that we don't believe we belong into that country. Most of our leaders will say Nigeria is not a nation. We have different nationalities. It's a geographical expression, all kinds of terms. And I believe that the young people especially, if we must move forward, we must leave those sentiments aside. Every nation, every country, they have their own history. A Nigerian must see himself as a Nigerian. And we must see ourselves as one. And if I am the president, if the best person to hold a particular office is either from Enugu or from Ibadan, or from Sokoto, or from uh, Yenagua, or from Calabar, it doesn't matter. And until we get to that point, as a nation, we cannot move anywhere. We'll be using, we'll be putting square pegs in round holes and round pegs in square holes because of religious sentiments, uh, tongue sentiments, tribal sentiments. And I believe that this message, in fact, I have for all, every, every presidential candidate that will see me is that if by divine providence you win the election, your first responsibility is to unite Nigeria. Without unity, we cannot solve our security problems. Without unity, we cannot solve our economic problems. So if you unite Nigeria, that is the beginning of a new Nigeria and a revolution, development or otherwise that will take place. I've been listening to comments from, uh, of course, the political leaderships and uh, sometimes even our supporters do more damage than the, uh, on our behalf. And I must commend you because your utterances so far have not shown any division. I must commend you uh, on that. And just keep doing what is right, because you are to be a pre if you win, you'll be a president for the whole nation. You'll not be a president for any group of people. But uh, I must commend the Labour Party, the uh, Transit. Though sometimes people complain about the, the uh, your media, uh, social media supporters. <laughs> but to you, nobody has made any negative reference about your vision for, for this country. So, my brothers, my sisters, thank you for coming. Maybe we'll have time for more elaborate uh, conversation, but on, my, on behalf of my family, uh, thank you sincerely for uh, coming to pay us this courtesy call. It's a big honor, because you don't really need to come and see me. I'm just one individual. Uh, but you have now come to greet me. Of course, Peter B is my younger brother, and uh, he's been quite a, uh, he's a friend, a younger friend. He showed that clearly. I don't want to go too much. Otherwise, you say, no, I have adopted and I've endorsed. <laughs> Those are the stories I go on. But he's a good man. That is, I can say that he's a good man. Thank you. So, so thank you. Daddy. Sir. You're also a good man, oh. Thank you, sir. Yeah? Thank and I know you before today. Thank you, sir. So I know you're a good man. Thank you, sir. So thank you.